Well, thank you, Sundar. He did actually a pretty good job of explaining IPR, but um, let me, let me kind of give you guys a little flavor for what we envision IPR to be. Um, let's see, demand uh, cease. Okay. Okay. So we are more than a research park. I hear a lot of people talk about research parks when they talk about um, what we envision for Institute for Product Realization. And it's really more than that. And I appreciate the uh, presentation on disruptive technologies. So what we envision IPR to be is a place where industry, faculty, researchers, students can come together, take advantage of disruptive technologies, and produce new products, bring them to the market quicker, cheaper, faster, and more efficiently. So Institute for Product Realization is just that, to bring products to market and take advantage of new technologies and either do it quickly or fail quickly, because not every product or every, um, every new new. Uh, product is going to make it. So our, vi our vision is to create a world-class center for innovation, research, and education in advanced manufacturing, which will position the University of Louisville as a world-class leader in product realization and development. So product realization is changing at a very, very quick pace. You, lo you look at all these new companies that are, that are uh, in existence today that weren't in existence five years ago, Uber, Tesla, they've been around for 13 years, but these companies that, that are taking advantage of, of Disruptive technologies and they're capitalizing on it. We're, we're in a digitally connected planet. Uh, everybody's got a smartphone. Uh, there's about seven billion people in the world today. Well, I've heard different uh, different numbers between 50 billion and 200 billion connected devices by the year 2020. I mean, that's an amazing amount of connected devices, M much more than just a, a smartphone. And th there are companies that are taking advantage of, of these new technologies that are out there. The fast will eat the slow. We're seeing companies starting today that, I mean, Tesla is a good example. Tesla's been around for 13 years, I think. I believe they're $38 billion in sales. I mean, they're competing with Chrysler. It's been around for 100 years, and they've done it very, very quickly. Um, so we're seeing customization at mass produced prices, and new environment creates new, or requires new skills. So in the past, um, let me take GE for an example. Everybody familiar with GE first build? Oh, here on the north side of campus. GE, um, in, in the past, it would take them about about four years for a product to come out of somebody's head to go through testing and to be mass produced. Three or four years. In, in, in today's environment, that's an incredible amount of time. Things change in four years. People's appetites for products change in four years. We're seeing products being developed now in months versus years. And that's what First Build was doing. Um, GE realized a while ago that they're great at making 1,000 refrigerators per shift but they're not as great at, at innovating. You really need to get away from the, the campus to innovate. And when I say campus, I'm talking about GE Appliance Park or, or really any industry. But they realize they need to get away from the Appliance Park to innovate. So what they've done is created First Build. And First Build is a very, very unique environment. And the more I tour, the more I realize how unique this is. But they realize, get away from the environment, bring appliances to first build, and not only can GE engineers look at these appliances to innovate new products from these appliances, they've opened it up to the community and they've opened it up to the world. And what they're seeing is just an incredible amount of innovation coming out of, of GE based on appliances, but because of that, they're also seeing other products that are being developed as well, not just from, from appliances. And they're seeing it done very quickly. So GE first build, they can make they can build everything at first build. So instead of shutting down the, the GE appliance park production line, to make 10 prototypes or something, they can make them all at first build. They're making them there, they're making them quickly, cheaply, in months versus years, they're selling them there, and they're also crowdsourced, which I think is really amazing. Um, crowdsourcing, if you're not, not familiar with that, it's, it's a way of um, selling your product before you really make it. So GE is determining what the, what the public wants, and the public is telling them what they want because they're actually buying the product before they're even making it. Uh, the little nugget ice maker, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or not, but that's a really unique uh, product that came out of GE First Build. So, appetites are changing, personaliza personalization is being required, um, and urgency. So, delivery within hours versus days versus weeks sometimes. So, we're trying to create an innovation system that brings all this stuff together. Uh, the, the research capabilities here at the University of Louisville are incredible, and I, I spent 20 years in manufacturing, um, well, a couple of years in uh, economic development with the government, city level, we're working a lot with the state. Um, prior to that, I spent 20 years in manufacturing, and I had no idea the University of Louisville has all the different research capabilities that it has, and you know, shame on me for not knowing that. But one of our jobs is to get the word out to the world that the University of Louisville has all this stuff. We want to create a collaborative environment with other organizations 
we want to be able to work with companies on, on disruptive technologies to produce the product quickly, cheaply, cheaply and bring it to fruition. Uh, we want to have a micro factory environment where they can actually make products and a distribution network set up as well. So IPR exists today. There's no physical IPR, but the, the, the term IPR, Institute for Product Realization, that is a relatively new term for the university, but it exists today in all these different forms. So you can go around campus today, and you're, you're here with uh, Sundar in the Materials Innovation Guild and 3D printing, but we've got um, the, the United or Underwriters Laboratories, Advanced Manuf or Additive Manufacturing Competency Center, a lot of acronyms here, GE's first build, uh, the Con Center for Renewable Energy, uh, the Rapid Prototyping Center, um, Materials Innovation Guild, we've got a, a great robotics guy, Dan Papa is here, uh, artificial intelligence, um, Lodi, logistics and distribution, uh, smart sensors, both existing sensors and sensors that don't exist yet, uh, micro nanotechnology lab, and big data and analytics. All this stuff exists here today. So that, that's what IPR is today. It's bringing industry with students, faculty, researchers to take advantage of what we have today and take advantage of disruptive technologies. But we're not stopping there. We actually do plan on having a physical location. So if you guys um, are not familiar with the University of Louisville, there's an area behind Speed School, about 40 acres, where IPR will physically be located. Uh, this is a rendering of our first building. Uh, it shows IPR. It does show GE's first build there, and um, I think that's going to move there. It kind of remains to be seen whether that will actually move. It's, it's so well established where it is. Uh, I'm not really sure it will move there. but. 40 acres behind Speed School, so that's where the first IPR building will be. Um, that's, that's where we envision other companies to physically locate there as well. So currently, IPR supports small to medium-sized businesses. So any kind of any size business can come work with the University of Louisville. We don't physically expect you to move here, or don't expect you to physically move here, but we can work with you on these uh, these uh, R and D areas and introduce you to what the university has, have access to faculty, students, and researchers. So small to mid-sized companies, IPR exists today. In the larger fashion, we, we do envision um, large size companies to be anchor tenants within IPR and to physically be located in IPR. You know, GE's first bill would be an example of a company locating in IPR, but we might have a, you know, a defense first build and a textile first build and an automotive first build and a, Transportation first, but a healthcare first build. So we'll have large anchor tenants within the IPR land, and then what that does is create opportunities for startups and entrepreneurs. So if you look at GE's first build again, not only are they innovating appliances, but they're they're creating new products that are coming out of first build. We we, we envision between the large anchor tenants that have micro factory space, classroom space. Um, and just maker space. So new products can be developed. So Kentucky is very uniquely uh, situated to leverage what IPR has to offer and what the university has to offer. Uh, we've got a very strong manufacturing base. Uh, we've got a governor and a mayor of, of Louisville, at least, that are both manufacturers and both very interested in growing the manufacturing base here. We're centrally located, great area for logistics, and we have strong in institutions here. It's a way, a way for, show, for Kentucky to showcase what we have as far as manufacturing capabilities. So what this will do is benefit certainly students. Our, our, our ultimate grow, goal is to grow the university. We want to grow the uh, engineering students at Speed School. We want to grow faculty and just help the university. So it will benefit students, faculty, uh, the university, certainly benefit industry. Again, coming from industry, 20 years uh, experience there. There's so much more I could have done in industry had I known all the stuff was here. So we're getting the word out. It opens it up to the community as well. If the community is coming into First Build, and anybody in this room that has an idea can go to First Build and get help and collaborate with everybody there and bring your product to the marketplace. And in the state, we want to help grow jobs with the state. So that's what IPR is today. Any questions? What it is today and what we envision it to be tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, John.